Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza in Los Angeles and Bronx Born Pizza in Bend, Oregon. Gray Block and Bronx Born. Get them here. What's up, you little arthropods, huh? What is an arthropod? I think it's a, um, like a, you know, like a daddy, daddy, daddy long legs, you know, like a, um, yeah, like a daddy long legs. Isn't that a crazy name for a little, um, you know, a, um, a cricket or, you know, an insect? A daddy long legs. A daddy long legs. Think about that. Kind of a pervy name, isn't it? Oh, look at that daddy long legs, huh? When you think about that. Come on. Um, welcome to this past weekend. Let's go. She told Said she was a Christian Saving souls in Savannah And the Lord was sending her to Alabama What's up? What's up, pup? That's uh that is Alabama by Bishop Gunn. And you can see me, you know, actually, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not even humble bragging. I'm just straight uh telling you that you can see me in their video. Um they let me be an actor in their video an actor and an actor is somebody that impersonates things that are that somebody else made up. Which is bizarre really, but they let me do it and it was fun, man. I was out there just I mean, we shot this thing outside of Nashville, and I was out there battling the dark arts. Boy, every time I turned around, there was something, something lecherous and deviant. You know, just one of the devil's uh, tentacles had just reached out from the depths, from the fiery, dusty, dirty, chocolate, you know, starfish-sniffing depths of, 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 of existence. I mean, come up and just try and just just suck on my tongue, you know. That was a crazy. Uh, that's and that's what happened there. And they would try to come and get me and just lure me back in, lure me back into the devil's billfold, you know, just lure me right back into 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 Hades, uh, but crack, you know, but crack. And that's what it's about, man. It's me battling the dark arts. And Bishop Gunn gave me an opportunity to be in a video, and it was a lot of fun. You know, so you can go check that out, and the link will be on our YouTube and support their song, uh, Alabama. Uh, if you're on the YouTube, I'm in the new, uh, we got a new set. We got a new set. And, man, you know, it's funny, like, it is exciting, man. They got, we got, people have sent us all kind of stuff. We have uh, Jocko Willink's book in here. We've got the Unruly Bastards game. We got Ridge Wallet. Um, it, it's all wood in the back. And this is, you know, wood was recovered from, I think, a ship or a Navy ship or something or, you know, or just local wood or something, four by sixes or something, 60s. And they got Jordan Peterson book, a pumpkin right there. One of Mother Nature's fucking dirty little you know, gonads right there, one of those orange little party poppers that she floats out this time of year. And isn't it kind of crazy that, think about this, Mother Nature at this time of year makes orange vegetables for fun. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just some, you know what? She's just like, you know what? 
I've been doing regular fruits and vegetables all year. It's October. I'm going to make a couple of these fucking beautiful, spicy little, you know, little uh, naranja, orange knickknacks. These round, you know, these round little vestibules. And that's amazing that she does that. And she does it every year. And she remembers that. That Mother Nature has that, that she's that acute. That's, isn't that fascinating? Think of how acute nature is, man. Just one thing to the next. Keep it going. You know, time to make this. Time to start a waterfall. Time to oh, keep churning the quicksand, you know. Oh, don't forget uh, these birds got to be born. Here they go. Hatch them. Oh, time for the orange vegetables. Think about, think about what Mother Nature does. And what a powerful woman that is. And the upkeep. And she shows up year after year. It's another thing that's fascinating. Mother Nature shows up year after year. And she's constantly here for us. That's really pretty beautiful when you think about it. That Mother Nature is here for us. That's really, really beautiful. And the rest of this, you can see I got my nieces and nephews up there. I've got five nieces and nephews. Their names are J.C. Renee. Uh, Zephy, Stella, Max, and Madison. And I got a picture of them up there. And we got everything. A lot of gifts people have brought us. Uh, George Carlin, we got that worm rod that showed up last week. We got that Noah Syndergaard, that autograph ball in here. What else? We got the hamp that my boy gave me over there outside of Nashville. We got that Gray Block pizza advertisement right there. Uh, we got these Piedmont candles. We got a lot of nice things that have come in here. And so I'm just letting you know, from time to time, things will change on the, on the shelf behind me. And uh, don't get upset if you sent something and it's there and then it's not. It's just the way life is. Things change, you know. You know, sometimes Mother Nature makes orange vegetables and then sometimes she doesn't. And that's okay. You know, that's okay. Things change. Oh, what's going on with me? This weekend, I didn't do that much. You know, I was really excited. Our producer, Nick, uh, you know, showed up yesterday and got this got this bad boy installed. We, uh, what else is going on? You know, I was feeling, honestly, like a little bit down in the deezies last week, and so I'm trying to climb out of that. You know, I've been really struggling with smoking cigarettes, to be honest with you. And every time I do that, they take me away from... You know, I don't enjoy it, so they take me away from happiness. Every time I do it, I'm just feeling bad about myself. So it's not even something that I enjoy anymore, you know? Uh, so, I, you know, uh, it'll be okay. I just got to, you know, I don't like that. They make me feel just downtrodden. That's what they make me feel like. What else is happening? You know, everybody's talking about the movie A Star is Born. I want to go see that. Uh, not too much else, but I'm so excited to have this new studio and I, and I have on a nice shirt and you'll see that if you are able to see this on the YouTube, you can see I have on a really, I mean, this is custom knit. This is knitted or, you know, ex expertly done or something like that. I got this shirt and a shirt is a place where your body can hide, you know, because at some point in time. You know, people said, hey, we're tired of looking at your tits or your chest or your back or your navel. I bet that's what a lot of it was. Because, you know, people's navels, bro, if they don't take care of their navels, your navel starts stinking, bro. And you know that. I used to date a girl and she had, I mean, she had, I'll say this. She was a beautiful lady, okay? She had beautiful, nice head, nice um, arms, you know, torso, nice, you know, her skeleton. You couldn't see her skeleton, but it seemed like it was nice because of the, you know, the accoutrements that were on it, the muscle and tendons and skin. But she had a, I mean, her navel smelled like somebody had just been hiding just little, just little pieces of olives in there. I mean, her navel just, I mean, it smelled like somebody had just been, just been making just dirty cotton candy down in there. You know, cotton candy that didn't have any cotton in it. And it just had candy and just, uh, 
you know, different, you know, just different types of booty scents. And her navel, man, I couldn't, so it was just crazy. Like I, instead of like, if we were making out or being, you know, getting, if she and I were being, you know, making out or getting kind of, you know, sensually authentic, uh, I would try to cover her navel up with one hand. And so it's hard to really, you know, it's hard to, you know, you know, maneuver well on a woman's body when you just got one, when you just got one hand. And, I, and I'm right-handed, so I would cover her navel up with my right hand. So that means I'm feeling around her body and touching her and trying to, you know, do romance type of touch with my left hand, which is not my, this is my secondary hand. You know, I only, I only shake hands with my left hand if, say, if I've been in a fire or if, you know, my right hand is stuck in a you know, in a car door or something like that. That's the only time I would ever shake hands with my left hand. Or, you know, if somebody else is already shaking my right hand and I want to keep shaking hands at the same time because, I, you know, I want to, you know, cut corners and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, you know, I want to be efficient. Then I would, that's the only time I shake hands with my left hand. But, but so when I'm, when I, I remember when I was making out with that girl, I would have to put my, you know, I could if that because if that scent hit me out of that navel, that navel, she had that little, I mean, it was just a little, it was just a call, you know, had call, it was just a little just cauldron. It was almost like a front kind of little booty, you know, you know, uh, it was like a, you know, kind of like a booty, but didn't go very deep. And it just was poorly scented. And so I covered up with one of my hands and I would try to feel her body and touch her and be natural with her and massage her neck and stuff with my secondary hand, my left hand. And, and it was hard, man. You know, I've never been blind or anything like that, but I've had to do that, which is where you cover somebody's navel because of the stench and you try to touch them and be natural with your secondary hand. And that is very hard to do. It's very, very hard to do. Um, it's kind of like, you know, that game where they'll say like, you know, touch your head and turn your arm, you know, spin your hand and put one hand on your stomach and move it at the same time, that little game they do. It's kind of like that, but while you're erect and wanting to be sensual. And that's what's kind of different about it. But, but yeah, it's just, you know, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Oh, uh, nope, nothing. But yeah, it's just that time of year. You know, it's that time of year where, uh, you know, where you got to, nope, I don't still know what I was talking about. Well, I'll just say this, man, Mother Nature is a real fancy lady. She's a real fancy lady, and I love a lot of what she does. And so I'm grateful to be here on uh, on her big ball bag here, Planet Earth. But I, uh, what's been going on, man? I've been thinking a lot about the future, honestly. You know, I've been thinking a lot about the future, and I'm a little bit scared. I don't know if I'm scared, but I'm just like, well, wonder what the future is going to be like. Like, is it going to keep getting more automated that, you know, that they're not going to need us? Like somebody said the other day, they're like, uh, I heard anyway, someone say that um, they think we've bought our last car. Like the car you've bought most recently will be the last one that you'll buy. That after, you know, that in the coming years, it'll all be like shared cars where everybody's Ubering or, you know, using something, you know, like a shared, it'll be like a shared vehicle. And I was like, wow, that's pretty wild. Like imagine, you know, not having a car anymore. Imagine you go outside of your house and you just have to stand there because there's no car. (sighs) Just kind of, you know, is that the future, what the future is going to be like? And if everybody's going to keep cooking food or will it just be like things are delivered like smoothies? I feel like everybody's just starting to drink smoothies, man. Dude, I had a dream the other night, right? Four people in my dream were drinking a smoothie. And I've never had that happen before. So what does that tell you? It tells you that something could be on the loose. Something could be happening. It's just, uh, you know, it's crazy to think what the future will be like. If, you know, if uh, I start to wonder if like our senses and stuff like that are just like, are we going to start to develop? I thought about this. Will we have like a new layer of skin that we will wear? 
like think about like right now we still have our you know our, our regular skin and it, it can get cut or something like that and broken or whatever get a rash but i'm wondering if in a few years or something they'll just have like a suit that you'll wear at all times and it will keep your body temperature regulated it will keep you insulated um it will keep you protected so like if a building or something falls on you you'll be okay and it'll be at that point it'll be like people will be like dude you remember like like you remember when people used to have just their regular skin with no form of protection and that'll sound insane if you know somebody that used to be like that. I mean, it already sounds crazy. I remember growing up writing. We used to write. We would write everything. And now that almost sounds crazy to think. Crazy to think that, oh, well, remember, we took a, pin, a stick. We heard, Somebody told us something. And to remember, we took a stick that had like a wet color coming out of it and wrote it onto a piece of a tree that we had, a piece of paper. And that was how we did it. That's oh, That sounds bizarre right now. So imagine when, you know, just with a few, I, I just can't, I start to wonder what it'll be like. And I'm curious as to what some of you guys will think, you know, what you guys will think the, the future will be like. You know, will we even have flavors anymore or will they just have a thing where you just remind yourself, like a button you press and it just reminds your brain what something tastes like. You know, will we even have, I wonder if our stomachs will have an outdoor pat, you know, patio outside of our bodies where we will install food and just put it in. It's like sustenance to keep going. That the joys that, you know, of eating and getting to know each other and all of that will just seem kind of archaic. I don't know. I bet there's going to be a lot of communities going to start up that, that want to preserve a very human way of life. Because the direction we're heading now is just, you know, I don't even know how human things are anymore. You know, it's like we don't even, like life doesn't even have some of the same value sometimes. If you look at on some of this Instagram, they have, uh, you know, these different sites and stuff where people are dying, you know, or like kids are doing crazy, you know, stunts, you know, like butthole Jonathan or, you know, um, uh, alopecia Jeanette and and then it's like somebody who you know you'll do, it'll just be a picture of like a kid jumping off a building on a skateboard and you're like well what the f did the kid die? and he'll like hit a, you know he'll he'll land on like a teeter-totter or something and break completely shatter his legs and you're like holy shit is that is he okay what happened you'll see a kid get shot out of a cannon into a stop sign or something like 600 yards away. And you're like, what? Fuck, what? You'll see, you know, two people will, you, you know, will, uh, will jump into a volcano. will do a backflip into a volcano. And you're like, what the fuck? And it's just like, awesome. Five stars. So lit. Fire, fire, fire. You're like, are those people, are they dead? Is that a lot? What is it? And you, it's just like we don't even, it's almost like it doesn't even damage us anymore if we see that kind of stuff. We're just getting, we're getting far along. We're getting down the, we're getting down the rabbit hole of, I feel like that we've done everything. That everything has been exploited. Everything has been, you know, everything that's, that, you know, that we even held sacred as humans sometimes has gotten, you know, it's been... We're oversaturated with it. So I just wonder what happens, you know? Do we start to move away from humanity into more like, mm, you know, electronica? Or what do we do? What do we do? I don't know. Sorry, I don't know if some of this is dang mundane thoughts. But these are just some things that I've been thinking about a little bit. You know, I've just been thinking about those kind of things. What else, man? I've been thinking about. Uh, I've been thinking about you guys. I've been thinking about. You know, I'm excited. I'm headed this week to uh, to Appleton, Wisconsin, and I think it's sold out. And then I'll be in the Orpheum Theater, um, and Buffalo, New York. Those shows are still available November first and second and third. And then I'm in Salt Lake City, Washington D.C., Addison, Texas. Those are all sold out. And then uh, December seventh and eighth in Lexington, Kentucky. And thank you guys so much for coming out and supporting me. You know, it's kind of crazy. I can't even believe 
I can't even believe that people are coming out to the shows. You know, you do this job for so long, and you just, uh, and people don't come. And so I'm just grateful to have people to entertain, you know, because I really love being able to entertain people. Um, what else, man? What else is going on, you know? A lot of great calls, a lot of great questions. Uh, you know what? Here's the hotline, as always, is 985 664 9503. Last week, we had a young lady uh, who called in from Seattle saying that she wanted to have a little bit more sex than her fiance. And she was more of that sexy, that little purveyor. And she was out, you know, she was kind of like that buffet. And she wanted, you know, she wanted her man to show up. And have different snacks and different pieces and different, you know, and just, you know, she, she wanted her man to come through the line twice, if you know what I'm saying. But that's not what's going on. So we had uh, we had a response. Somebody called in um, with a suggestion uh, for her, for her man. Onward. Hey, Theo, i got to make this quick. I'm at work. I had to sneak out. I heard this young lady uh, had a problem with her old man not wanting to get dirty anymore. Yeah, and get dirty. He means do that sex more. Well, tell him, to, tell him to go doc and get his testosterone check, man. I got on some testosterone, man. All I want to do is get in the sack. Oh, wow. So he got on that testy, and he wants to get in the sack. Let's hear more. Anyways, love what you do. Um, and uh, keep doing it, man. Keep keep uh, making my day go by good at work. And, uh, and take it easy on yourself, man. You, you do good. We appreciate it. And uh, have a have a great have a great day. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, sometimes I'm too hard on myself, man. I don't know where I learned that. You know, I think uh, I don't know why. And you know, it's funny because I probably wouldn't treat anybody the way that I treat myself. You know, it's just baffling sometimes. You know, I would never like. Uh, you know, if somebody was having a tough time or something, I would just try and be supportive of them. And instead, I treat myself, you know, I'll just put myself through the ringer. You know, there's this voice in my head sometimes. It's like, you know, you got to do more. You're not doing enough. You got to do this. And even when I do something, sometimes I can't even feel the joy of doing it. You know, I can't even feel the joy of doing it because there's this, there's like this invisible judge inside of me. That just wants to tell that will, and that judge, man, I'm realizing will tell me that until I could be laying, I could have a, 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 you know, a needle stuck into my arm going into someone else's body who needs blood. I could be draining myself completely of blood into somebody else. And, and, and with the other hand, I could be doing a, a you know, a, um, a puppet show for some children. And I could be on a stationary bike that's, you know, that's, that's using like, you know, creating electricity to power a, you know, maybe a, 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 a you know, a vinegar shop or something like that, or a, a, you know, a coffee place. And everybody's inside is enjoying little cups of coffee or cups of vinegar. I could be doing all that at one time and my brain would be like, man, what the fuck? You're not doing anything. You know, yeah, I don't know what that is inside of me, man. I and I know maybe that's not even what you were talking about. This just got me thinking. But I, I, God, I hate that. I, 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 I don't know why. You know, I would never. You know, I, you know, I, I really am. I'm just hard on myself. You know, I'm hard on myself. I think some also too, man. I'm indecisive. You know, and when you're indecisive, you kind of by not making decisions, you just kind of always stay in this anxious space. I find that, you know, if, since I don't make decisions for me, I find that I always stay in this anxious space. And it's like, you know, it's just like, man, just make some decisions and move and go and move forward. You know, instead I'll stay in this anxious space. And when I'm in that anxious space, it's easier for the part of my brain to tell me, man, you're not doing anything. It's like if I had a little bit more definition sometimes, more definitive than I think I would, you know. Maybe my brain would back off because it would show a little bit more of my prowess as a man. You know, it would show a little bit more of my ability to shepherd myself. But yeah, you say you got to go get that testosterone checked. And what that is, testosterone is just that level. You know, it's how much, you know, how much butter you got in your cup. And it's, you know, testosterone is that kind of thing makes you perk up. 
You know, it's whenever you hit a, you ever hit a speed bump in your car and you don't faint or you don't die or anything like that. Or you don't scream, do you? All right. That's because testosterone holds you down. You ever shaken somebody's hand, you know, with either hand? Yeah. They don't, they don't snap your arm off, do they? No, because testosterone holds you together. You know, you ever, uh, have you ever, you ever ripped one of your nose hairs out? Just get in there and just rip one out? Well, that has nothing to do with testosterone, dude. That's crazy, though. That's crazy. Some dudes will do that. I used to have a buddy of mine, man. He got to see him sometimes. He got in the morning outside of work and he got there and rip a couple out. And he'd yell his wife's name too when he would do it. You know, Lizzie. And he'd just rip one. Damn it, Lizzie. He named all of them Lizzie and he fucking ripped them things right out of his snout. Man, he was really, really stressed, I think. But yeah, I don't know that testosterone, you got to get it checked out. And maybe that's the thing. Man, you get a little bit of testosterone, I'll go in on something. You get me a little testosterone, I'll fuck a clay bank in the spring. You know what I'm saying? I'll, 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 I'll walk alongside of a river until I find, you know, Mother Nature's put that soft little clay bank out there for me. And I'll get in there. You know, and some people don't think about that kind of stuff. Clay is, uh, it, you know... Clay is safe to have sex with. And it's really almost Mother Nature saying, hey, come over here. Why don't you practice on, a, you know, practice on me before you get out there. So very interesting when you think about what clay is. Uh, we had some other great calls that came in. We're going to get to some of those. I want to ask you guys as well, if you want to support the podcast, that you can buy me undies. Me undies are, they're great underwear. And sometimes inside of your pants, you don't even know what's in your pants, especially if the day, if it's like four in the afternoon and you've had a busy day. Dude, you, who could, anything could be in there. You could be missing a pencil. You know, you could be, have sp- you know, spilled a little bit of chocolate sauce in there, whatever. Well, that is, uh, that, that is why you need MeUndies, so you know what's in your pants. And they are made of micro-modal fabric. It's three times softer than regular cotton. Regular cotton, it's pretty soft, but it's not that soft. Sometimes you see regular cotton kind of whispering and being like uh, jealous. And what they're jealous of is micromodal fabric. Um, uh, Me Undies releases multiple fun prints each month. It's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You're going to love them, and you can get 15% off your first pair and free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash weekend. That's MeUndies.com slash weekend weekend um let's take uh, another couple of calls that came in t- uh here we go onward hey what's up tl it's brad from kansas what's up brad thank you for calling man hey uh i was listening to this past weekend um when you were talking about halloween and how you love it and halloween actually used to be my favorite holiday man uh, i loved uh being able to put on a mask and just get away oh yeah Oh, you put that mask on, man. It's like, um, yeah. And you're just looking out of the eye holes and then you just, you almost don't even feel human a little bit. You almost don't even feel human. Let's hear more. You know, and, and everyone seems so happy, but my dad actually passed away on Halloween. This will be the second Halloween without him, man. And I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to understand how I get that back, you know, how I get that love for Halloween back because, you know, every time it comes around, I think about my old man and just what he's doing and where, you know, how, how he'd be proud of me, man. And well, I'm sorry to hear that, man, about your father. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky deal, I think, being alive because it's not going to last forever, you know. And I think you have a really unique opportunity I see here. You know, your father passed away there on Halloween, and what you could do is... You could dress up like your dad. Have you thought about that? You know, to really, you could be him. And for one night on the tank, you know, for one night of the year, take him out and just, you know, enjoy the world as if you're him. And I'm not saying go visit people and surprise people or something like that or stop by, 
you know, I wouldn't even tell your mother or anything like that. I think this would just be something for you and him to have together. But if you were to dress up like your father, you know, you maybe could drive by some of his old friend's houses or, you know, maybe drive or, you know, or go by the school that he used to go to or something. You know, take his spirit for a walk, if you will. Um, Because I think there's something special about Halloween. You know, it's a time, you know, the way that, that the different chasms of existence and, 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 and life and outer space and Mother Nature and Pandora's box, you know, and God's bonnet and all of that, the way they all fit together, it's very much like a Rubik's Cubes. And a Rubik's Cubes is a shape that doesn't want to show you who it really is. And there's something special on Halloween when all those, when everything kind of lines up and you can walk through from the beyond to the great beyond and to the before. And you can meander back and forth like you're just in a big house party. And time just kind of shows up and just, you know, it doesn't keep track of itself. And a full moon comes out and there's wolves. And it's a very, very unique time. And it's a very much, it's just a water slide of just existence and possibility. It's like the universe just like loses its memory for just a second and forgets where it's going for just a second. And there's something special that can happen on Halloween. And so that's why I think it would be very interesting if you maybe dressed up as your, as your father and went out and about. Now, if you wanted to get real fun with you could stop by, you know, maybe an ex-girlfriend of his, his house. Or if he used to play cards with his buddies, you could set up a game and meet all of them and do that. You know, and really live it out. But I think that would be a special way that you could honor him, man. But I'll tell you this, no matter what you choose to do, your dad loves you. And, and uh, the love, you know, I remember when my father passed away, I was 16 years old. My dad died and, and man, it hurt so much. You know, I didn't even know I could hurt like that. You know, it felt like that. It felt like. It really felt like God was punishing me for something. You know, I remember crying so much at his funeral and my tears would, they hit the, the linole, the floor. And my dad had another family and they, um, an older family and they didn't put us in the funeral and like the notes or anything. So I remember, you know, they just were up there saying that he was survived by, you know, only three children or whatever when he had seven children. It was like, I remember they didn't do that. You know, they figured they paid for the funeral or whatever that, we they didn't have to do that or whoever set it up did and i just remember feeling like i didn't even exist like man i here i am at my father's funeral and i'm not even you know i don't exist and i just felt uh and i remember my tears came out onto the floor and 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 i i just uh that some of them went into the cracks of this floor and i remember thinking man i want to just go into the cracks and i just want to you know never come back you know i just remember just feeling like that you know just feeling so deep like that because when you're a parent when you lose a parent and you're young suddenly you know you go from being really not shallow but being very you know you're holding a comfortable amount of the world and then suddenly you you just become so deep you become so deep and there's so many parts of you that the part of the world that you've been holding for so long it doesn't fill the depth that you have now inside of you and so you, that's how you feel empty because the world you know doesn't fill up um, the pain you have. So, but I'll say this, now I know, and, and I knew, it took me a while, but I, I finally knew that, you know, my dad always loved me and your dad will always love you. That's all I'm saying, really. I don't know why I took a, such a long road to get there, but your father's always gonna love you. And, uh, and yeah, man, and you'll see him again. And I believe that. And he, uh, and, and all he wants for you probably in the meantime is for you uh, to be comfortable and to be well and know that he loves you. Uh, and I'm just guessing about that. But, but I bet it's an okay guess. 
All right, thank you so much for that call. And I want to thank right now, we got the new studio, and there was something kind of missing. I was talking with uh, producer Nick, and there was something kind of missing, and we believe that it is this. This flag right here, and this is an American flag, if you're not sure what country you're in, or if you live in a different country and you haven't seen it in a, in a while. Uh, this is just the U.S. flag, and uh, and it's made by thelegacyflag.com, and they make these handcrafted and charred heirloom pieces right here, and this, that old stars and stripes, you know, that fucking, that baby, that Richard Nixon, you know, this is Richard Nixon's, you know, birth blanket right here. This is that Becky Ross, baby, get that header. And you can check out the detail on there. You can get a splinter on this thing, man, but barely. That's how comfortable and realistic it is. If you smell that thing, you could smell damn, um, you could probably smell Davy Crockett's uh, breath. And so that's remarkable. And you don't get that kind of craftsmanship where you can smell the breath of an American legend right there. This probably, this feels like a thousand of Paul Bunyan's uh, butt cracks right there. And that's beautiful. And there's not a lot of other opportunists like that that are out there. And this is going to keep our uh, studio swaggy. So you can go to thelegacyflag.com and use the promo code DARKARTS for free shipping. That's legacyflag.com and the promo code DARKARTS. All right, let's take another call here. Hey, it's you. Uh, it's Dan from Pittsburgh. Hey, Dan from Pittsburgh. Thanks for calling. Uh, I just wanted to have a little comment. I've been listening to you for a long time now, and I just heard you talk about it on the last podcast with Sebastian, but back when I was dabbling in the dark arts myself, I kind of went on a little vest buying spree as well. Oh, yeah, you got them vests, huh? And I love a vest, man. A vest is the only piece of clothing uh, that you can look sharp and catch a football at the same time comfortably name another piece of clothing you can do that well you could do socks or just underpants but normally just a vest okay vest you if you can wear a vest if you don't know if you want to hug somebody and feel a little bit more of the hug than usual that's a vest if you don't know you know you've been drinking all day or doing drugs or whatever and you don't know if you're supposed to go to a wedding or a rave you're not sure hmm what am i gonna wear um a snorkel? No, a vest. And that's just a snorkel for your torso, baby, that fucking vest. If you, you know, if you, if you think about, you know, it, you know, if you're not sure if you're going to do magic later on tonight. Vest. Vest is super, super, super popular. Very rare. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about vests is. They remember your body shape. No, you know, not a lot of different uh, pieces of clothing remember your body like a vest does or like a condom. You put on a condom again, it remembers the contours of you. So does a vest, dude. A vest knows if you're a man or a woman. A vest knows. In fact, a vet, you want to have a gender reveal party? Tie a vest around your lady's abdomen. You know what I'm saying? Tie a vest up around that womb and, let's, and look, a vest knows. A vest knows a lot more than we think that, that it does. So, but yeah, let's hear more. I didn't have anything crazy, but I did end up buying like 10 vests. And it's a great little collection. I still wear them every once in a while. Got to look dapper. But uh, yeah. Just wanted to put that out there. Thanks, you. I love what you do. Thank you, brother, and thanks for buying vests. Because more people should buy them. Probably one of the top 60 or 70 pieces of clothing, I think. Let's take another call. Here we go. Theo, I got a problem with you, bud. Mm-hmm. Love the show, and I love you. But uh, when I was listening to the episode with Sebastian, uh, you were saying uh, that you were afraid to make uh, commitments in your relationships with whether it be a girlfriend or maybe friends, I don't know. But why, man? What are you afraid of? Um, you know, you're a good-looking dude, you're funny, you're compassionate. You can tell that you care about other people. So why can't 
you and have it be just okay and normal? You know, I don't know. It's a good question. You know, I don't know why I have such trouble. Uh, the trouble with me is so it's in the commitment, man. It's in the, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's so hard for me to like, just to drop that anchor. You know, I think part of me is worried, you know, like, I, you know, I don't want the story to be over. You know, my whole life, I've, you know, I've been a story person. I've loved stories. I've loved um, listening to stories and hearing stories. You know, I didn't like my childhood. And so, you know, I made up stories. You know, I didn't get, I didn't like the bus. You know, I was scared to take the bus that I took to school because kids would see me get off of it and they would know I was poor. You know, because the bus I was on, it came from the poor white and the poor black neighborhood. And so I was scared. You know, and I guess I was ashamed, and so I would ride my bike to school. And it was like four or five miles. And this was in fifth grade. You know, and it was really, when I think of it, it was just crazy. Just crazy, riding my bike that far to school. At that age, fifth grade, think about that. And just out of shame, you know. I was ashamed that if people saw me that they would think, oh, they would think that, you know, Oh, he's not, you know, he is, he doesn't have any worth, you know, and I guess I already felt so low about myself that I needed to like, feel, I needed to hold on to anything that I could. Um, but anyway, I say that just because, so when it comes to commitment, I, um, you know, I always, I, you know, if I commit or if I set, you know, I guess if I, I think part of me is if I settle down, then the sto my story's over. And the only thing I've ever been able to control about myself was, you know, I get, I don't know if I, I don't know if it's what people thought of me, but I guess, you know, in my, well, that was a disillusion that I had or something as a child that, you know, I could control, like I can control my story, you know, like I couldn't control my life. I couldn't control the realities of my life. So I didn't, you know, so when it came to, when it comes to commitment, it's like, if you commit, then the, it's like, you know, the story, that's the problem. I can always tell the story if I don't, if I stay, if I stay uncommitted, then the, you know, there's still room for us, for, for me to, to tell my story, I guess, or to adjust my story. And... And, and if I stay uncommitted, then, then there's no, you know, no one can nail me down to my story. And I think when I was young, I was just probably so ashamed that I didn't want anybody to know my story. I didn't want anybody to know the truths of my life. You know, I just didn't want anybody to know. And so, you know, so I would, you know, I'd make up where we lived or I'd make up, you know, I'd say I rode a different bus or I would, you know, I remember I used to take a bus to a different neighborhood and get off there and then walk to my walk to my neighborhood. You know, I just didn't I didn't want my truth to be I didn't want my re, my reality to be my story. And so I think I just got somewhere in there I lost, you know, I just didn't commit to the realities of my own life. And I think some of that has kind of made its way into um even when it comes to relationships. It's like I'd rather just, you know, I'm afraid if I, you know, if, that if I, yeah, I guess if I lock myself down into a future that, that I, I won't be okay. So something in, in there, you know, I just, I know, I'm afraid to lock myself into a reality. Because the experience I had, I guess, of my previous reality, you know, of my reality of growing up and stuff like that, I just didn't, it was so uncomfortable for me, you know, and I'm not trying to complain, I'm not complaining, but I am trying to, I guess, figure out, you know, why I think and feel the way that I do. Uh, but anyway, man, I appreciate the support, you know, and maybe I won't be so hard on myself in the future and maybe I will, you know, uh, be 
more hopeful to try and commit because staying in the, staying in the middle and just being like in the middle of every and just on at a certain point it just is exhausting you know not making choices and real stern choices at a certain point it's just kind of exhausting uh and that's where i'm at sometimes um but i think with the relationship the commitment and being a lot you know and being having my story not be malleable i think that's what it is it's just i don't want to be locked into any truth like any real you know it just scares me being locked in locked into something I guess. I don't know. This is a great question, and I appreciate you asking it and help me think about it. Um, what else do we have, man? Let's take another call here. Uh, here we go. Hi, Theo. My name is Greta, and um, I was just wondering what your thoughts are about um, hugging versus kissing, a greeting, like uh, when you're meeting someone or when you run into someone. Um, I'm not really a big fan of, of either of those options, but people have definitely made comments um, about the fact that um, I'm a little hesitant to hug them. Uh, you know, if it's someone I know, it's, it's not really a problem, but a hug just seems so intimate, you know, like you just seem kind of weird, like pressing your body up against someone you're not really familiar with, but... I guess it seems weird. I think it seems weird out here where I live in Los Angeles. I don't know where you live, young lady. And, and look, and I appreciate the, the, you know, I'm happy you called and you're, you're making me think about this. Hugging versus kissing. Because a kiss is just your, it's just your lips hugging. That's all it is. And then sometimes they wrestle and try to, you know, do sex with each other just with the tongues only. And that's all it is, man. A tongue is just a little dick that's in your mouth. A lot of people don't think about that. And... The unique part about your question is, is that, is that I think in some places, hugging is a lot more normal. You know, where I'm from in a rural area, I would hug. If somebody introduced me to a woman, a lot of times I would hug them, you know, and if they were an adult woman, I'd kiss them on the cheek. You know, one cheek, I don't get all French and, you know, come around the other side of their head and shit like that, like a damn, you know, creeping Tom. I do one kiss, bam, you know, like that. You know, just like that fucking, you know, like a dangerous falcon with a with a cheek fetish. I just do that one peck, peck. But some, you know, some people do that double-sided, and that's the French, bro, because they're always up to some bullshit. But the truth is, is that uh, if I hug, I go in both arms. You know, because a hug is just wrestling somebody real fast, but also not even really, you know, trying to hurt each other. And I'll poke my butt out when I do it. I don't go navel to navel. Now, that's when shit gets damn randy right there. When you press flush up against somebody else's navel during a hug, I mean, that is something you rate. You know, that's something you see like when children hug who are hugging for the first time. You know, people that have all, you know, the tism or the mentally deranged, they'll hug sometimes just straight up, just firing it up. You know, they had uh, a couple families by us. You know, I had a buddy growing up, this boy named Derry, and they had a, you know, another family down the street, and both of them had children that were mentally unwell. You know, some of, you know, and they, you know, they were just kind of living freelance, you know, when it came to some of their genetics. And they would also, sometimes they would let those kids hang out together and spend time together, and beautiful, and beautiful. And those kids would press their crotches against each other. I mean, violently, almost watching like two bucks or something on the Nature Channel. Just being real aggressive, you know. Another time that I think it's okay to hug somebody navel to navel is if you guys are twins. Now, if you're twins, you guys are, you know, you're really supposed to be one person. So the fact that you guys are hugging aggressively, that's not even crazy. You're supposed to be one person. I don't care if you're having sex together, really. Because if you think about it, you're supposed to almost be, you're pretty much supposed to be together. But... And if you guys do navel to navel, or women do navel to navel in your twins, it really makes more sense because your navels are really, you know, it's like two people sharing, you know, double straws out of the same, you know, uh, you know, vanilla shake. 
but I will often here in Los Angeles, I won't hug a woman as much. You know, you got to trust your instincts out here. You know, out here, it's a lot more, there's a lot more nerves in the air. You know, people are looking, you know, uh, there's a lot more, I think, uncertainty and fear out here. They've created a lot of fear in here where out here, where it's, it's, it's scary to hug a man out here or to hug a woman out here, either one. And so I definitely usually wouldn't kiss on the cheek out here unless, you know, you just trust your instincts. You just trust your instincts. And most of the time, if you're well calibrated, your instincts will lead you uh, correctly. I find that. Uh, let's, hit, let's hit another call right here. Here we go. Hey, Theo. This is uh, Richie from St. Louis. Hey, I love the podcast. I love what you're doing. The more you learn about yourself, like the more I learn about myself. You know, things I never thought about. Oh, thanks, Richie. Um... You know, I feel like I was better at that when the podcast started. I've been struggling myself with, uh, you know, just feeling overwhelmed and a lot of traveling and just, you know, just being kind of tired out a little bit. And so it's hard for me sometimes to even get in touch with myself recently. Um, and honestly, that's been a little bit scary, honestly, personally. Uh, let's hear more. But uh, something I have been thinking about lately is uh, jealousy. I feel myself just kind of getting jealous of uh, friends of mine and just kind of people around me. I'm just kind of curious if that's something you ha have felt or something that you still feel and uh, how you deal with it because I'm kind of struggling with it. So, All right. Thank you, man. Love you. Love you too, bud. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. It's nice of you to say that at the end. You know, you could have let it go on out and just go on out there, but you said love you at the end, and I appreciate that. You know, it's important. It's important sometimes when you feel that urge, man, and, and, and I'm saying this, it's usually often with family, but you feel that urge to say it, you do it. You know, earlier today, I stopped at a buddy of mine's uh, birthday party, and I and, you know, I hadn't seen a buddy, and I gave him a fucking big hug, man. You know, I'll go straight up navel to navel, let our stinks touch it, let, you know, if my navel's stinking, your navel's stinking, you know? If you're a bird, I'm a bird, you know? So I'll let our navels just, just get down there and just touch stinks, you know, just touch those front those front stink holes, you know, and uh, and I hugged him, man. Sometimes you got to, sometimes you, you got to fucking hug somebody, you know. Even warriors hug each other, you know. After these men fight and shit, they hug each other or they shake hands or they do like a fast hug. So some of that's normal. Um, jealousy is wild, you know. I think it's funny, man. We and especially growing up, you know, I, I was very very jealous. I was very jealous, and all, one of the reasons I was jealous, well, I mean, because if you grow up, you know, my mom had to work all the time to make money so that we could, you know, have our needs met, you know, our basic needs met, and so as a kid, you just see like, man, you know, money is so important that it keeps my mother away from me, you know, and it makes you then, in your head, it gets stuck that that's important, you know, and so then you see that other people that have money, it makes you jealous of them. Because that's the thing that they really get that you do that you don't have. They get the free time. They get the extra time. You know, they get to play sports and do stuff where their mom can come and pick them up, or they get to go do this and have extra time with you know afternoons to go camping with their dad and all that kind of stuff. And so that's where you're like, man, you know, that's where a lot of the jealousy would come in for me, especially growing up. Uh and also, man, when I was young, jealousy gave me something to be. You know, I didn't have an identity sometimes. You know, I was filled with just so much like, because uh, nobody taught me. Like, if you have like a, a figure around that teaches you, hey, don't be jealous of them. You know, you, lo you lo love others and learn to lift them up no matter what. Then I, would, then I would have more of that built into me. But if nobody tells you that, then, you know, jealousy is just a, it's a, it's an easy, low hanging fruit and your, and your brain will take those things, man. And it gives you something to feel. Dude, when you, when you grow up and you have a chip on your shoulder, you grow up in a rural area and don't have much or something. And I don't care what color you are. I was thinking about this the other day. I don't care if you're black, white, Latino. When I really think about those things, I don't know how much I identified as that. As much as I identify more as the color of the feelings under that person's skin. 
You know, my friend, you know, one of my good friends growing up was this kid, Devin, and he was black. And the thing that we, the thing that we felt a lot, you know, I just knew that we were the same a lot. You know, and I was a little bit, you know, I was more fortunate, I think, because, you know, he went to, he went to jail for murder. Um, and I was more fortunate because I had just a little more, you know, I had someone else in my neighborhood who took me in and helped me out more or something like that. You know, just a little extra influence here or there. But I identified with him because it was the colors that were under our skin, whatever those were, that made me really, you know, made me really, I think, connect. Um, and that still make me connect to others. Um, those feelings, you know, that's more my connection or unconnection, I think, sometimes with people. Um but yeah, jealousy is powerful. And jealousy is that thing where, it, you know, it gives you something to be. When you don't know who you are, you don't have an identity, bro, jealousy fits perfectly. It gives you something, makes you motivated, makes you active. You know, jealousy, fucking, je yeah, jealousy, bro. It's powerful, man. It's powerful and it's helpful until it's not powerful and helpful. You know, and that's when... You know, uh, I mean, everything works until it doesn't work anymore. And that's when you got to get, uh, you know, you got to change your patterns. Um, what else, man? Let's take another call. Thank you so much for that call, man. You guys make me think about a lot of interesting stuff today. I'm, I'm kind of tired. I feel bad about saying that, but I just am kind of tired. So I'm going to be honest with you. Onward. Hey, what's up, Theo and Nick? This is Stu from Oregon. I was listening to the Aubrey Marcus podcast, the, uh, thousand poundage of man episode and it just struck me with a little thought that uh i, I thought kind of could relate to you and myself as well you know sometimes we get these urges to you know perform a little self-love oh yeah you're talking about spraying out busting yourself out you know busting your nuts out of your own body with your hand you know jailbreaking yourself more it may feel like we have some kind of uh addiction to, uh, you know, to, to doing that, and these guys were talking in a way that, that made me think, you know, maybe that's just our body telling us, you know, like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not craving masturbation right now, what I'm craving is, is sex, instead of, you know, reaching down your pants and giving myself some love, what I could be doing, what we could be doing it's something to improve ourselves, make ourselves a better person so that we can connect with another human in a way that will, you know, give us gratifying and fulfilling sex, which is what our body really craves. Amen, brother. And I think that that used to, you know, I think as crazy as it is, it's like our sexual, you know, the sexual desires are almost becoming like an appendix, you know, because your appendix used to be f helpful in your body. Your appendix, that's where your body stored extra semen, I guess, if it wanted to, or, you know, maybe a couple walnuts or something. If you're going for a hike, your body might store a couple walnuts in your appendix. Or, you know, some glitter or something. If you're going to a rave or something, or your little bag of Coke or something. But now, it's like it, it, our body doesn't need it anymore. So our body's not doing that because we're not doing hiking anymore. It's like the, the, as we start to not do stuff, then our bodies are gonna, not going to need those things. And this will take a long time to take effect uh, in nature, but nurture-wise, it won't. You know, it's like if, if your kids grow up and they know that mom and dad go to separate rooms and watch, you know, or use different types of, you know, pleasurables and watch visuals that get them to, you know, achieve ejaculation, then what? then that's what they're going to think uh, connectivity is and sexuality is. And yeah, it's like when the, the ping, that ping that happens in your, in your crotch, you know, in, that, in your little, in that nudie nudie valley of yours between your leagues, that right down between your leagues, bro, that is um, when you get that ping, that's a desire. And we've become so, uh, I, or, I, I say we, I'm so uh, you know, like kind of, you know, unfortunately programmed poorly where I go, when I, when I get my ping, I go straight for that reachy, you know? 
I go reachy and I teach that spilly spilly out of my wiener. And that's not good for you. Because that ping is supposed to be a desire for you to be a, to, to man up. Right, to do something. Go learn a trade. Learn how to do drywall. Learn how to run a hot air balloon. Okay, learn how to uh, cut hair. And, but also, you know, to be straight. Or I guess you could be gay too. This doesn't matter. That ping is that ping ping. It was that, it was that little alarm that reminded you, oh, you should learn a trade because a trade will attract someone of the opposite sex and you'll be able to have sex. But now, as soon as we get that ping in our crotch, you crack open your phone, you get a little bit of that cellular, you know, that butt pleasure or whatever they're doing on there, you know, playing, you know, uh, you know, they got foo fighters and people, you know, touching each other's assholes or something. And then next thing you know, you're empty. And that's your whole experience. You haven't, you haven't built yourself up at all. If anything, you've just kind of defeated yourself a little bit. And that's how I see, right? You get the ping, man. The ping used to, you'd save up all your pings. And then when you saw a woman, she could see, oh, wow, this man, you can feel his chi. That's what they call the chi. And that's what the Chinese call the chi, boy. Makes your neck stand up straight. Now, but we got these soft bosses now, all the time running around now. I ain't even got enough nut in my body to hold my neck up. You know, you got dudes, they on, you know, I got to be on a Cialis and a neck brace just to fucking go on a date. Because I ain't got enough chism. You know, I don't have enough of that super, you know, that super baby body glue inside of me to hold my neck up. That's sad, bro. That's sad. In the future, people are going to be walk. you know, going to have a crutch under their chin holding their neck up while they stand there and look at each other. Because they don't have enough ping, enough nut nut built up inside of them. And, and that is one of the things that I said, that's why I'm against pornography. And now, if you're still using it to just party out every now and then, that's fine. But if you're going to it night after night after night, and it, you become that Pavlov's, you know, that's Pavlov's dick. You know what I'm saying? The second you hear that whistle, or the second you get that ping in your C-Roch, the thing goes up to your brain, and instead of saying, okay, you need to go do something to learn something to attract a woman, you know, learn to do bowling, learn to, you know, uh, make a, uh, you know, a, um, a gumbo or, a, a, you know, make a fancy chicken meal or make a pot pie or something, you know, make that, you know, them green beans, bruh. Something right there, them crispy green beans with that wonton pop pop sauce. Something that will attract a woman. Learn to build a fence, you know, but with a gate so the woman can come in when she sees how nice the fence is. But instead, we just kill it. We just bust our pings out into the sink or into a, you know, into a dirty, you know, an old dirty VCR. They had a guy down the street from me. And he, his mom got complained at him for, you know, blasting himself into his own socks and his, you know, family's different, you know, uh, pieces of clothing and stuff around the house. So he... He got a VCR and he'd bust right into it. And he never plugged it in or anything, but he'd bust inside that thing like an old one that didn't work. But uh, anyhow, a lot of great calls today, man. We got one more and they'll have some suggestions you guys can offer um, this next listener. Uh, here we go. Here's our caller onward. What's up, Theo? My name is Jesse. Um, I'm an Air Force ROTC cadet in college and i'm trying to figure out this whole life thing oh well all aboard jesse and look man you're still in college you're trying to figure out life i like the way you're thinking you're going to be successful and i'll tell you why because you're already thinking you are thinking the world is full of a lot of people who do not do that my friend there's a lot of people out there and there it's goldfish people they just think that their bowl is this big and that's their bowl and that's it and they just swim around in their bowl but then there's thinkers, man. And then there's thinkers, and, the, and that could be you. Onward. Having a hard time pretty much balancing everything and trying to figure out if this if going into the military is exactly what I want to do. Um, and I've been wanting to do going into the military since I was younger, but I'm, I'm also doing the college route, and I have people in my life that want me to become an officer versus like enlisting and that nonsense. 
I'm at that point in my life, like, I'm only, I'll am i be 20 in a couple of weeks, so I'm at that point in my life where, you know, when you're in college, moved away from home, you know, you learn more about yourself, so you, you're trying to figure out everything that you, what your interests are and everything that's different about you as you grow as a person, and I'm having a hard time trying to figure out if being an officer is really what I want to do in the military. I'm scared that if I get out, I'm making the wrong decision. Mm. The past, like, five years of my life, it's all I kind of really know right now, even though, obviously, I haven't served and I'm not a veteran, but it's just that lifestyle that I, I don't know if I'm going to struggle with if I make the wrong decision about quitting the program or not. So I was just kind of open to anybody if that has has served and has, has any idea of how he could deal with the situation. But um, I just want to say I love the podcast. Keep doing what you're doing, and I hope to talk to you all soon. Thank you for calling, brother. I appreciate that. 20-year-old, almost 20, said he's been in junior ROTC. And ROTC, man, let's be legitimate. That's people chasing each other around the school with wooden guns after school. And they had that at our school, dude. And they had people, you know, a bunch of guys shaving their head and, um, you know, making hot rod cars. And they chase each other with wooden guns and, you know, and rubber knives and shit after school and stuff like that. And they were doing all kinds of... um and they were doing all kinds of, uh, you know, Lord of the Flies type of shit where they tie each other up outside and, you know, you know, do like pretend raids and like eating cans of chili and shit outside out front and, you know, just making fires and just ridiculous stuff. I mean, amazing stuff because a lot of those people go on to actually, you know, militarize their lives. But also it was just, a, you know. It, it, it was half of those kids that seemed like ne'er do wells that were out there just, you know, giving each other dirty buzz cuts and, you know, and, uh, and play, you know, chasing each other around with wooden guns and stuff like that. And, um, you know, grenades made out of, uh, you know, smoke bombs and, um, and cheap cement. But, I don't have an answer for you, man. I've never, you know, I had a roommate when I first moved out here and his name was Paul. And we actually ended up sleeping in the McDonald's ball pit. I've told that story before. And uh, and I'll say this, man. He, he, you know, he wasn't sure. He was in the military and then he got out and tried some different things. Then he ended up going back in. And he's led a great path. And now I think he's actually going to medical school. He's a medic. Uh, and a really smart, adventurous guy. Um, but, and he ended up going back. He eventually went back, you know. Uh, so I, you know, I've been around that environment, but I guess for me, what I would say is this, I always, you know, I've wished that I had served. You could do, go do it and get it done, man. You, there's more time than you think when you're your age, when you get to be my age a little bit, there's less time than you think. But at your age, man, you could go, if you want those things, you could go get them done and be done at 24 of service. And then. You, you know, if you feel that you owe a debt to your family or to your country, then that's out of your system. And that doesn't live inside of you because it does live inside of some of us men. You know, I think there's all, you know, uh, for me anyway, for me, I can't speak for anybody else, but there's always that asterisk a little bit, you know, are you ever fully a man if you can't, you know, defend your land? And, uh, and, and, and. And a lot of men might disagree with me on that, and that's fine. But for me, that's how it feels. I'm not saying that that's the right way to feel. Um, but also, you could ask your mother. You know, you could ask your mother what she thinks. I think that she would, uh, you know, if you have a mother, that she would love you, and she would be able to tell you what she thinks and take her suggestions. Because in the end, I've learned, and I've learned it through this show, someone's called me and said, all your parents really want from you is they want you to be happy. And if they want more than that, then it might be a little unfair. But they want you to be happy. You know, and that's true, man. I mean, all you really, all, and all you really want is your kid to be happy. I don't even have any kids, but I was a kid. And I'm still a kid in a lot of ways. You know, and you'll always be uncomfortable as a kid. Uh, you know, I think sometimes that kid will never leave me. Part of that unhappy kid will never leave me. Um, because you always, you know, you want, you know, you never kind of stop wanting that kid to be happy if he wasn't when you're growing up, you never stop wanting him to be happy and he lives inside of you and he's just always just, he just wants to be okay. 
And he's scared sometimes probably of committing to something because the last time he committed anything was when he was born or something, you know, when he was born and when he came into existence and he didn't feel okay then. And so really to commit to something and lock his, you know, to put bolts onto his story and really, it's just very scary sometimes. But those are great questions, man, and we'll put that out to our listeners. Sorry I'm rambling, bro. I'm getting a little bit emo on this. I know. I'm excited about this new set. I'm also kind of nervous. I already missed the old set a little. But, you move, you know, it's funny. You, you're so afraid to move on, and then when you finally do, it's like, oh, okay, this is what, I, this is what it was like. You know, I dawdled for months about getting the, the getting the this new backdrop here in the studio. I dawdled about it for months. I don't know. call, you know, maybe. I remember I put a thing on my Facebook thing six, eight months ago, a year ago. And then finally just said, let's do it. And by next week, it'll feel like home. You know, sometimes it's just about making a decision and moving on, moving on into it. You know, and we don't, we try not to be so hard on ourselves along the way. And these are things, man, I'm so glad some of you guys called because some of this stuff I, you know, I just needed, I really needed to have a think about, a, a think about some of these things. Man, the holidays are coming up. Aren't you guys excited? Let everybody else worry about that other shit. People want to argue online. People want to fight. People want to let them go worry about that shit. I ain't no Muppet like that. If you got political thoughts, you take them to the polls, baby. That's where you show your work. Show your work at the polls. It's uh, uh, but but sorry. Let's let's take uh suggestions for the young man that if you were in the military or weren't sure, you heard his call. He's not sure. He's uncertain. You know, maybe letting his family down. Um, he's been through ROTC. Uh, just some nerves on him. But he's also aware. You can tell that he's aware and he's thinking ahead of his own life. And, uh, and that's a beautiful thing to see. It's nice to know that. And that's, that's awake. You want to talk about being woke? That's a, that's a woke boy right there. You know, he's thinking about, um, about what his future can look like and the choices he's going to make now and how they're going to affect him down the road. Uh, so I like hearing that. But if you have some suggestions for that young man, uh, the number is 985-664-9503. Give us a call. We'd, re we'd uh, really appreciate it. As well, you can go to uh, subscribe to the Theo Von Clips channel, and that's on YouTube. And there's a lot of uh, clips on there that aren't on the main channel. And so that's something neat that you could get uh, involved in if you want to see different stuff. Uh, I want to thank everyone on our Patreon. Um, you guys have been so so instrumental in, uh, in doing some of the outreach that we're doing. And, you know, uh, doing the single mom thing, um, doing the uh, surprise game show for cleaning lady thing. And um, and I'm just grateful. And we're going to do other things in the future as well. Uh, so I'm just grateful that um, that you guys are around. I want to thank the Redditors, people that get on Reddit and are supporting the podcast. A buddy of mine, I don't know anything about Reddit. You know, I didn't ask me anything on there a while back. And other than that, man, it's, it's hard. It's a little, it's... You know, it's kind of like uh, the ancient pyramids, but at top speed a little bit. And so um, I get on there and it's a little confusing sometimes, but somebody said the other day that there's been a, uh, people being very supportive on there and, uh, and, and, I, and I'm grateful for that. You know, I'm really excited about a guest that I have coming in this week. Uh, you know, um, there's a podcast called Business and Biceps. And it's with uh, these guys, Corey and John, um, uh, John Fosco, Corey G, and Maurice Claret. And they're going to be in studio. Maurice is coming in studio this week. And uh, and then Corey and John. So we're going to have Maurice in for half. And then uh, all three of them in for the second half. And they, they, you know, like I get a little emo in here. Sometimes I wish I was a little tougher. And one of my goals in the next year is to kind of toughen up a little bit. Just my shell. You know, I still want to keep my heart in a comfortable place, but I want to start to, you know, I want to start to have more confidence in myself and, and I want to start to get myself a little bit, not tougher in a bad way, but just tougher where I, you know, where my outside kind of can match my inside a little bit more, just more to support myself so I don't have to put my chin on a crutch. And, um, and you know, Maurice Claret, you may know his voice. Uh, I mean, I think Maurice's voice comes from, 
I, I mean, you, you're just going to have to hear more about his story. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. And he, you know, he has a, he's come from a, a tougher road, I think, or a more unique road too. And battled a lot of the dark arts, man, internal and external. And I'm just so excited about that. And I listen to them to get that pump side of me because they're more, you know, they're more, um, they got more wolf blood in them than I do right now. But I would like to be able to maybe, you know, have a little bit more vigor in my voice, have a little bit more vinegar in my piss sometimes. Um, but anyhow, I want to thank you guys for supporting this past weekend. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the Bishop Gun Alabama. And um, and I, it's sober October. And next week, you know, if you have a call for the young man that was in RTC or you have a call, a question about sobriety or something like that, you can hit the hotline 985-664-9503. Uh, next week, I'm going to talk a little bit more just about my experience, I think, with sobriety um, and what that's been like for me and why. You know, sometimes I think I talk about stuff, but I don't know if I sometimes talk about why. I don't know. Fuck. I'm exhausted, man. I'll see you guys in Appleton, Wisconsin next weekend. Um, you know, be good to yourselves. Make a choice. Don't stand there in the middle. It can get, it can be comfortable, but it can be overwhelming after a while. You know, you're going to be fine. You know, take care of yourself. If you're uncertain, ask a loved one. You know, sometimes you can't think for yourself. Just find someone you, you can trust to help think for you. Uh, and you got to keep it going. We may have a, you know, a past that we don't feel great about or that makes us uncomfortable. And that can inspire us. And we can't let our stories be in vain. You know, we can't let our stories be in vain. If you've been given a story and you've been given a, a, a journey, let it mean something. You know, pay it off. You know, pay it off because you just, you've done all the work, man. You've done all the mining. You know, you sometimes you got to look at the gold. And I say that because someone called at the beginning of the podcast and said, hey, man, don't be so hard on yourself. And you're right. Sometimes I just got to take a break and look at the gold, man. Look at the good things because we've all got them. You know, my buddy says all the time, he said, hey, man, we live in America. You got every, look at all the things you, you got warm, you got food, water, you got a place to sleep better than often probably 70% of the world. So we're doing okay. You guys be good to yourselves, man. I hope you don't die. You know where in Alabama. This new studio. Go look at it on YouTube's boy. Ooh. She was hotter than the black top. Broke down at a truck stop. She looked about as wild as the story she told Said she was a Christian saving souls in Savannah And the Lord was sending her to Alabama She got a old man, but I shouldn't be worried Though it seemed like she was in a hurry Higher than a junkie, drying out in the slammer Lord, I hope I don't die in Alabama She was quick to change the station when they spoke about a murder in Savannah. Mm -hmm.
Make it home to Louisiana, Lord, I hope I don't die in Alabama. 